The Transfusion and Anemia Expertise Consensus Conference has issued the latest pediatric blood transfusion guidelines. These guidelines focus basically on threshold for PRBC transfusion in critically ill children. The good practice statements as per the conference is that consider not only hemoglobin concentration but also the overall clinical context for example the symptoms, physiological markers, lab results before deciding the need for transfusion. Preferably should know the hemoglobin concentration before transfusing except for if the patient has life-threatening bleeding. So for a general critically ill child Transfuse if hemoglobin is less than 5 gram per deciliter. If between 5 to 7 gram per deciliter, consider your own clinical judgment. And if more than 7 gram per deciliter, consider transfusion only if hemodynamically unstable. Post transfusion goal should not be necessarily to achieve normal hemoglobin for age, rather, it should be to relieve the indication for transfusion like respiratory failure, hemodynamic instability, etc and not a particular hemoglobin value. For critically ill children with respiratory failure, the guidelines are almost the same. That is transfusive hemoglobin less than 5 gram per deciliter. Between 5 to 7, use your clinical judgment. And if more than 7 gram per deciliter, you have to transfuse only if the patient is hemodynamically unstable or if there is respiratory failure with severe acute hypoxemia or chronic cyanosis or hemolytic anemia. Coming on to critically ill children with non-hemorrhagic shock, consider all possible strategies to augment oxygen delivery and decrease oxygen demand and not only PRBC transfusion. No RBC transfusion in hemodynamically stable but ill children with severe sepsis or septic shock. So if sepsis or septic shock is there but the patient is hemodynamically unstable, no hypotension, then there is no need. In critically ill children, you have to transfuse if hemoglobin less than 5 gram per deciliter. Consider if between 5 to 7 gram per deciliter depending upon your clinical judgment. And also PRBC's plasma and platelets have to be transfused individually but empirically in ratios between 2 is to 1 is to 1 to 1 is to 1 is to 1 until bleeding is no longer life threatening. In critically ill children with brain injury, it may be considered if the transfusion, if the hemoglobin level is between 7 to 10 gram per deciliter. Brain oxygen of, uh, monitoring cannot be recommended in determining when to transfuse or when not to transfuse PRBC in these children. In critically ill children with acquired and congenital heart disease, optimize all components contributing to oxygen delivery, that is, achievement or maintenance of normal sinus rhythm and or heart rate control. Optimal preload and contractility, optimal RV and LV afterload, adequate oxygenation and a reduction of oxygen demand before initiation of RBC transfusion except in case of hemorrhagic shock. Conservative management sparing transfusion should be adopted wherever possible. When deciding to transfuse children undergoing cardiac surgery or heart transplant, must consider the overall clinical context and not only hemoglobin. Investigate and treat pre-op anemia in all such infants and children. Hemodynamically stable in children with congenital heart disease whose oxygenation is adequate for their cardiac lesion. For example, in cyanotic heart diseases, the saturation might be low but enough for their hemodynamic stability. Hemodynamic stability. If these children are awaiting surgery, the risks, benefits and alternatives of RBC transfusion must be completely considered before recommending the same. There is no evidence to support transfusion and hemoglobin more than 10 gram per deciliter at any point of time in these children. Insufficient evidence to support transfusion to target a specific hemoglobin concentration in children with idiopathic pulmonary hypertension with structurally normal heart. Transfuse to maintain hemoglobin between 7 to 9 gram per deciliter in hemodynamically stable, critically ill children with uncorrected congenital heart disease. And intra and post op blood sparing and conservation procedures should be followed in those undergoing cardiac surgery to limit donor exposures and other blood component transfusions which, lead can, which can lead to post operative complications. Now, in critically ill children with hematological diagnosis, 
In sickle cell disease with critical illness, a preoperative transfusion to achieve hemoglobin 10 gram per deciliter or rather the main aim is to, hemoglobin, um, to achieve a hemoglobin S percentage of less than 30% prior to the administration of general anesthesia. No such recommendation is there for minor surgical procedures in these children. And in sickle cell disease with acute chest syndrome, you should prefer exchange transfusion over simple that is non-exchange transfusion rather than transfusing PRBC, transfuse and uh, remove the HBS level, HBS uh, containing component of the blood and transfuse the non-HBS component of blood that is exchange transfusion. In critically ill with oncological disease and BMT candidates that is bone marrow transplant candidates, Hemoglobin 7 to 8 gram per deciliter should be considered as the threshold for transfusion. Those receiving renal replacement therapy, there should be no routine transfusion if hemoglobin is more than 7 gram per deciliter. Selection and processing of RBC components and critically in children, as per this consensus conference, differentiated cellular blood components, that is in which uh, radiation is done to the WBCs to wash off the cytokines, to kill off the killed cytokines and leukotrienes and inflammatory mediators produced by them is to be done in those with severe congenital or acquired immune deficiency when the donor blood is a relative of the child, when the blood donor is a relative of the child and washed cellular blood components in which washing is from the normal saline to remove the plasma containing products to avoid the plasma containing products for example plasma and cryoprecipitate in those with history of severe allergic reactions or anaphylaxis to blood transfusions. Consider the evaluation of Ig antibodies and Ig deficient individuals and anti haptoglobin antibodies also in them and Ig deficient blood components should preferably be used from an Ig deficient donor in those with confirmed IgA deficiency. So just to summarize these guidelines Transfuse of hemoglobin is less than 5 gram per deciliter in almost all the circumstances. If between 5 to 7 gram per deciliter, use your own clinical judgment in almost all the circumstances. And if hemoglobin is 7 gram per deciliter, you may consider transfusion and rather you must if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, he has respiratory failure, there is acute brain injury or uncorrected congenital heart disease. I hope you've now understood the recommendations for transfusion in children. So thank you very much for a patient listening. Thank you.